Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. everybody welcome to spotlight and i have two fantastic guests i can't believe i have dan stoyle who's a modern tapestry artist and over here on my right diane burns hausler who's an artist a singer songwriter a painter well artist covers that too and also you're an author of a book at the widow's walk so more into everything i'm going to start with dan stoyle Dance, how are you? It's great. I haven't seen you in a long time. Since I was a kid. Since yes. you were. <laughs> you're still a kid. Oh, it's just because I'm a little older. But at any rate, I know your mom. I've, I've known her for years. All right. I was so surprised that you were into art. How did you get started with different, you know, what genres of art? <clears throat> Do I say that? Yes. Yeah. Genres. Yes. Yeah. Um, I had my hands in clay at the age of eight and did ceramic hand building until I got to college and then um, found out that the, the, uh, it was a traditional program. So I took another studio arts class and I, um, you know, I, and it was textiles was the only one that was open. So I learned <laughs> how to dress a loom and I make all of my tapestries on four harness floor looms. So floor looms. Now, you say you make them. I mean, do you design first and then I pick draw, the colors? Well, some people, yeah, tell me how you do it. Most people will do a, like, they'll have a, an idea. They'll do the big sketch on butcher paper and they'll tape it to the bottom like a cartoon and then just color in. I never learned, no, I didn't have a teacher. So oh. I, I just decided to just, so I just do a little drawing, pin it to the castle of my loom and then just eye it the whole time. That's incredible. I didn't have, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you come up with these fantastic textile arts. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, is that what I'd call contemporary them? Contemporary tapestry. Contemporary ta tapestry pieces. Pieces, yeah. Is that, that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, we're going to take a look at these contemporary tapestry pieces. I have to say it slowly. So I understand that in the studio right behind you, we have some beautiful pieces. But I know that also we have a couple of photographs of these pieces, and I would love you to tell us more about each piece. Sure. So if we can please, uh, Maestro in the technical <laughs> room, let's flash up the first textile art piece that I said, ah, those are all three. And the, the one, well, I'm, I know we're gonna have another picture of one of the ones that I love. Those, well, I love all of them. <laughs> those are hanging behind you. Now. Let's focus on one of the pieces that I chose where there's a drawing with like wings. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what the name of that piece is. If we can show that, there it is. That's one of my favorites. What is the name? Okay, of the so piece? the tapestry itself is called 3 a.m. And um, it's, a, it's a tapestry about harm reduction. Harm reduction in San Francisco. It's a woman who is shooting heroin in, uh, somewhere in the city at 3 a.m. And in the middle of her high, she's floating above the city and um, moving towards the steps of City Hall where she's going to be bringing her issues there. Wow. Well, this is... And, and then it was, it was coupled by a mural and a sculpture on the floor. And this, uh, I made a bunch of uh, high rises. Unbelievable. Out of cardboard. I, I just, <laughs> you know, my eye is just, well, what can we look at? And I mean, we'd have to almost see it up close, I think, to get all of the ingredients you put into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go on to the next picture. I know we have another photograph of another piece. Oh, you're between two pieces. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, explain, please. What is the one on the left? Okay, the one on the left is called Granada, and that is um, a woman marching. It's like a, it's figurative and it's abstract, and this woman in the rain is marching through the streets of downtown Oakland, and the Tribune Tower is right there, and she's pulling the pin to a grenade. Oh my goodness. It is, it's, it's, sometimes it's heavy subjectry, but like, <laughs> I love the work. I love weaving. I love every shed. I love the sound. It's, it, it's like meditation to me. And uh, yeah, it's also very, yeah, exciting. And, but so how did you come up with, with the subject matter of those pieces? Was it just you walking through Oakland and you pick up ideas? I mean, because you meet oh, people. I'm always picking up ideas, man. I, they're right. just, you know, I, I think this one, I was just like, 
wh what happens is I don't do a sketch for a really long time. And then I'm up towards the wall, like I need to start this piece. And I'm like, uh, and then everything comes together and I'm just like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and so I drew this woman who is, you know, uh, the addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, no, she, no, this. Oh, uh, well, she's this, not. No, no I'm not sorry. Granada. That has nothing That's to do with. Different. Okay, yeah, Granada. Okay. I know the song <laughs> Granada. <laughs> Granada. <laughs> oh, the next photograph I have mm -hmm. is another piece, and I think it might be ah. That's the one. That, that's Granada. Yeah. That's it's Granada. It's a really great picture. It's it more, is. Yeah. It has a lot of movement. You could see this woman. She's yeah. dancing. And dancing over like a kind of a drain grate. And the water's going down into the pipes and then coming down into like this abstractness at the bottom. It's a really terrific piece. All right. Let's go on to another piece. I know that we have a photograph of another one. The next one. Photograph... Photograph, another photograph, ah. And we have that one here. Yeah. All right, now tell us in detail. This one's called Jumping Off, and I had a dream that I opened a door and I was jumping into an ocean. Um, oh, I do see the during ship. During a storm. I think I see the ship. Oh, there's no ship, there's just a doorway and like a cloud going over the ocean with Ooh. the waves. Yeah, and there's an owl at the bottom. Oh. It was, this was, uh, this, is some, um, this is an example of some early work that I did back in 2012. Um, where I was playing around the slit tapestry, which is where the tapestry has these slits where they're, it's not completely solid. All of the strips of black and white checkers and that opposing shapes, those are all slit tapestry. I, I, that's, it's mind boggling. So <laughs> explain that again, please, to a simple minded person. Ooh, there's a close up. That's great. Oh. Okay. So you said s split? Slit, like slit. slits. Okay. So there are slits. In the tapestry? Right. We're, we just pass some of them. In a, um, and this and is all solid right here, but then um, at the top, it'll go back to slits right there. See how they're not joined? Oh, I see. All right. There's okay. space between them. So I just weave back and forth between six and six and, and you know, all the now, way across. I have to ask you again, you said you just weave, but you're weaving a painting. I am. I'm, and, and where are all these threads? Well, it's funny because paintings are woven. I mean, pa paintings, paint is, they put paint on woven structures. That's the canvas. That's a woven structure. Yeah, and right. so I, you know, I feel like I'm just like a painter. I just like, actually, my weaving structure tells a story and I dye the fabric that goes into the weaving structure. So I, you know. You um, do the dyeing yourself? I stuff? do a lot of the dyeing myself, but... Um, you know, as a tapestry artist, if you can actually just go <clears throat> and buy some yarn and get it done without going through another process, tapestry takes a considerable amount of time. You can power through it, but gotcha. yeah, you want to make the process a little bit, yeah. So I, I dye sometimes when I'm getting, when I need specific colors. And, and so you have a, a loom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're weaving mm -hmm. and you're creating these wonderful images. <laughs> Thank and you so I, much. I, I mean, I can't imagine how you do this. I'd love to. Where do you have a studio? I have two studios. I'm, well, okay, so I have a live work space in Oakland, um, in North Oakland near Piedmont Avenue. And I have a um, studio, a great studio with a view of the water from uh, Dog Patch, um, oh, right off of Third Francisco. Street in San Francisco. Correct. Great place. Yeah. Great and, place. Yeah. All right. And so. Oh, by the way, you had that wonderful award given to you. Yeah. Tell everybody um, quickly about that. Sure, yes. Um, I, am, I am at Soma Arts right now, which is 934 Brandon Street. Um, nice. Until October 7th, there's the Murphy Cadigan Award Exhibition. So I was an, a Murphy Cadigan Award um, recipient. recipient. Yeah. And, um, and what is the award, the award consists of? It's an MF, of? all the MFA students, Bay Area wide, like, uh, apply for this, and only 13 are chosen. Oh, it's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. And then, so we get an exhibition at Soma Arts and, um, and, then, uh, and then a monetary award. And you told me that's only until October 7th. This so some nice. people will see this, you know, just before the exhibit will probably be ending. Parking is next door and it's, it's free parking and it's a oh, big parking great. lot. That's so <laughs> great. Now, when is your next showing of your art? Yes, I, in, I believe the opening is December 3rd. It's going to be, um, I have a giant painted warp piece, which is a whole another story um and it's beautiful but um it's in the show called portals portals um at minnesota street projects oh yes minnesota street in yes. san francisco yeah right so there. a lot of your work is shown in san francisco yeah but you live in oakland and work in oakland that's correct so you're getting around 
which is so <laughs> exciting. Well, Dance Doyle, and how did you end up with that name? I love the name. Well, my father named me Dance because I used to like to put on leotards and dance to Lionel Richie um, over and over again every Saturday. Oh boy. Yep. So That's Francis great. became France, and then that turned to Dance before I was like six. So. Um, it's been, and, but it's a part, like my, my father passed away um, a little over a year ago. And so it's really important that I take something from him. And then my, uh, on my mom's side is the Doyle, the Doyle family. Name, so I take right. something from both. I think that's great. Yep. And how do you feel when you do these artworks? A bliss. That's Absolute really, bliss. Yeah. That's it's, your passion. It's the only way to get my mind quiet. Yeah, because you do definitely have a busy mind. I can tell just by talking to you. <laughs> Congratulations thank you and thank so you much. for being on the show tonight. Thank I you think so it's much. Just wonderful. And I have another artist over here. My gosh, I am surrounded by art. Uh, Diane Burns Housler. By the way, everybody that's looking at the show tonight, she did this beautiful, beautiful piece of jewelry, made it for me after her trip to San Miguel de Allende. <laughs> with Miss, yes, I know, Kathy Holly. It's my favorite <laughs> place to go to. So Diane, you have several different mediums of art. I mean, all right, let's start. I think we should start with the jewelry you make. Really? Okay. Well, well because I'm thinking, yes, because I'm wearing a piece. All righty. And well, let's show them a few other pieces that you brought. Do you happen to have a few that you brought with you? Oh, my gosh. I yes. do. Yes. Not only does she have a few, you have zillions, but I said pick two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, let's Kathy. Let's hold that up. Um, so. Yeah, this one, when we were in San Miguel, I picked up the little pendant here and then was able to incorporate that into a design. So we have to explain this is a heart. The heart. And you also have another heart here. Yeah. Which is really, um, yes, it does resemble, I mean, it, it, what, it, it really tells everybody we went to the heart of Mexico. El Corazón. Yeah. Yes. De Allende. This is a beautiful piece. Beautiful piece. And your next one. Yes, I have a friend who, uh, is a glass blower, and he makes these little cabochons, which I really like, different colors. And I started playing with uh, polymer clay a few years ago when I got into jewelry, and I will create the design around the little pendant in the middle, and then create the whole piece from that. So each piece is, is one of a kind. And the beads, where do you get the beads just from it? All different places? Yeah, yeah. I, I I love to scrounge around at yard sales and things like that. And people get rid of th wonderful things, and they don't know they're getting rid of them, That's or they're true. just ready to part with them. And I can use them. And there are many outlets you can find. I went to the Gem and Mineral Show here last um, spring oh, and yeah. found quite a few things there. I've so been it's there wonderful. Yes, yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. All right, now the artist. The other side of you, that's the jewelry maker, everybody. Jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. You make okay. earrings and necklaces, I bracelets. Make, my daughter is the, the jewelry person. That She makes these. She makes the, oh, yeah, the wonderful earrings. Wonderful earrings, yes. Beautiful. And you make the and necklaces. And I make the necklaces. And I make, um, I've been making anklets. I make, you know, accessories with it, bracelets. Um. Well, we have your website. I know they're going to flash it across, I hope, because anybody that wants to see what you do and get in touch with you can... And I'm behind in posting things there, but uh, you can get a pretty good okay. idea. Okay, and the of same things. with Dan yeah. Doyle. I know that's what artists have to do. That. Let's go move on to your paintings. Okay. You brought, uh, well, you have a few right behind us. Right. Well, I must say that I've been working in the medium of batik, which is uh, painting on silk or any kind of fabric with melted wax as a resist, and then the colors are applied one at a time. So it's a long, tedious. Wow. Um, medium to to accomplish anything with. And I see and the one behind yeah, you. Yeah, this is one, an image. I took a photograph of Taos in um, New Mexico. I loved it. I did several pieces there. And this is a batik. And um, one, one color over another color. And then uh, once the piece is saturated with wax, you iron it off. And, and this is what you're left Unbelievable. with. Unbelievable. And this uh -huh. takes a long time. It, yeah, it takes quite a while. Now, you while. don't use your regular iron that you iron clothes with. No, no. This no, is once a special you, iron. <laughs> <laughs> once it's committed to batik, it's there. It's That's committed it. to batik. Now, behind you on the other side, I know I see a darling duck. And I was wondering, what about the duck? 
Well, this is actually a, a goose. My daughter could tell oh. me the actual type. Oops. But it's okay. It's surrounded by chickens and hens. <laughs> and um, she took the photograph when she was living back in Florida. And I did this with ink tents pencils. They're oh. wonderful. There's a water soluble uh, pencil, very deep and vibrant colors. And I started playing with them when I went to England and uh, got a set of them. And I decided after doing batik for 50 years, it was time to, to change course. To use ink pencils. Yeah, and I played with them. The nice thing about the, the pencils is you can do a lot of overlapping colors in the same process as doing the batik. So I was able to apply that to the uh, Oh my goodness. To the painting. And then I see something over here. There's some right, wonderful smaller right. canvases. I Let's show the studio audience what that's about. Um, audience. I, I started mixing mediums. I've, I decided that I was going to play after all this time. And um, I used the uh, so polymer great. clay great. with this emblem and the, uh, the cabochon, which is a, a blown glass piece. Beautiful. And I took a piece of my batik and and put it in here, mounted it inside, and then using acrylic paint, I extended the design out. Oh, it's terrific. Yeah, that it's was, that was terrific. great fun. And I love the one coming up. I know the season is almost it's here. coming here. This, this is the season to be jolly, right. everybody. And this, these are all just plain, unfinished For wooden Christmas. frames, right? For and I took holidays. a photograph of my nutcrackers. I've got about 30 of them. Oh. And um, <laughs> and embellish them with gel pens, and then this is a polymer piece, and the whole thing kind of is created around that. Oh, it's which is, wonderful! I'm not showing it right in my so cool. the okay. Nutcracker. I take my yeah. my grandchildren to the Nutcracker every year. And um, this next one, I use some of the images that I had from uh, San, Mi San, San Miguel. There you go, San Miguel. And oh, let's I see. Put oh, the, uh, I see the photograph on there. Oops. Yeah. The straight doesn't matter to do it's backwards. No, that's perfect. And um and used a polymer piece here and, and then and then a did a painting around the whole thing. So it's oh. mixing mediums. And it, it just is. they're really may fun I little things. Yeah, I see that. Oh, so there's a photograph in here. Yes. The Which photograph is, the photograph? is right in here. Then oh. it then it's extended out this way. And I painted the bottom, and, and it just, yeah. And this is a reminder, definitely, of the charm of the town. That's right. You picked up a lot of the charm. Correct. Well, Correct. that's incredible. I love that. And then the other. The I have a couple of little things here, and okay. I'll show you. Just yes, let's one do this quickly. These are great yeah, pieces. Yeah, I'm doing little ornaments using the polymer clay and painted. And um, these are little boxes that I painted and did a, a polymer clay ornament on top of it. Oh, these are good. This is a great for the, yeah, ornament. And look at the, the yes, boxes the are boxes. great. You can put so. all of your diamonds in there. That's right. That's and right. All of them. <laughs> and, and let's see the other one. You have another box? I do. I, I love do. the designs. Yeah. These so, oh, are like a shadow bananas. box in here. Yeah. So, this is yeah. beautiful. And you have a heart. This one has a heart on top. And that would be from San Miguel? Yeah. Did you pick that up? Sure. No, I didn't. Not, not, but it was inspired, certainly, from oh, being there. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. All of these are just beautiful objects. We have to have a big art show, I think. That's yes. what we're going to have to do. Well, the, oh, that yes. Will be, yes, yes well, coming tell everybody up, uh, when is the art show. All right. I belong to COCA, which is the um, colony of coastside artists uh, living in uh, Half Moon Bay, and there are about 40 artists that uh, are participating this year. And it's in November on the 13th, 12th and 13th, I believe it is. Okay, Can I so read we it? have yes. to, 12th so, and 13th, and where will it be? Well, it'll be at my home where my studio is. So oh. I will be having, my daughter is gonna be there doing her beautiful earrings, and another artist will be there as well. So, Fantastic. and there are many studios throughout the coast and people are doing it either individually, but most of the time they pair up and, well, and, and so get together. If, can everybody look at your website? Will you post something about that on um, your website? Well, I, if you catch up, I don't have it here with no, me. No, I mean, we, if you can post it on your website. Absolutely. Because oh, yes, the, it yes, will. Your website will be yeah. up on the screen, and people can go to your website. This is how Definitely. invaluable websites are. Yes, I just they are them. great. Now, we have to move on to the other side of you. 
the author a widow's walk right this is the book you wrote if we can show everybody the title because that in first of all i'd like to know what is the book about the background okay you wrote it i would say that the title first of all a widow's walk came from um queen victoria had a section of the castle after prince albert died yes. and it was called the widow's walk that's where she spent her time mm. also in in the cape back back east many uh, fishermen's wives had an area at the top of their stories of their homes where they would look out to sea waiting for their husbands to come home so that was perfect title for this book which is thoughts on the unexpected expected i started writing a lot of poems and poetic prose. This is after your husband passed away. Right. So I, it's about grieving. It is grieving. It is um, a walk, a journey through grief and learning to let go. And everyone does it differently. And um, I want to interrupt you for a minute because yes. I know time is short. Where can people buy this book? Is they go to your website? They can go to my website okay. and purchase it there, yes. That's wonderful. And there's a little bookstore downtown in, in Half Moon Bay called Ink Spell. They have it too. Oh, that's great. Read. Would you read an excerpt from it? We're so limited here, but I encourage everybody to go to Half Moon Bay to the bookstore. And it's beautiful. I know the poems are beautiful. And I think grieving, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the death of a friend or a relative or a husband or anybody, the grieving is grieving, and we all have grieved at some point in our lives. And read what one passage, and I think we yeah, I I couldn't find the other one they had, but I'm gonna look this. The title. Um, the title is "Surviving the Storms." Right. Uh, Twenty-four hours back, I thought I might drown, realizing it was my own tears that stifled, without realizing so. By days and end, the gates had opened, and they came, and they came, and they came. The despair of grief caught me up by the ankles, and I was down for the count. So, so wonderful, because it's true, that's what happens right. when you grieve. I have found that many people who have read the book and read the poems say that um, I was able to articulate what they were feeling. And, and of course, good. I did that for myself, too. So and that's great that's therapy, about. Right. and it helps people go through the grieving process. <laughs> Definitely. And you have to go through it. That's the important thing, is Correct. that right? Yes. yes. Now as a songwriter, <laughs> <laughs> how many faces does she have? Uh. You know, not only that, but I, I was, this is great, when I listen to your music, I can hear the 12 string guitar, which you, you played yourself mm -hmm. on all of these recordings. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a few songs. We have two songs, excerpts from two of your songs. Why don't you pull up a CD for me? Just show oh, a okay. cover or two. Because how many CDs have you recorded? Um, five. I've five. got four here. All right. Yeah. And we're all right. We're going to get into the songs. If I can just take one of these, I just want to show the okay. audience. We're going to play a song, not necessarily from the CD I'm holding up, the cover. But again, people can go to your website and find out about purchasing. The first song we are playing is an excerpt from Love. Yeah. It's, a, it's a song about love, yes, and I dropped the title. Can you tell me what it is? It wouldn't hurt at all. It wouldn't hurt at all. Let's hear that, because I love it. It's great, Thank beautiful, you. a ballad. And if every If I never let my heart Know the joy of loving you If I never took the chance To say hello If our paths had never crossed If we never paid the cost Then it wouldn't hurt at all To see you go So I thank you now, my friend Coming to the end of the road that we have walked along the miles. It is time to say farewell, and as far as I can tell. And that is a beautiful song. Do, do you know what CD it is recorded it's on? It's on uh, when it's called Tidings of. of um, Comfort and joy. Oh, perfect. Right. 
Tidings of Comfort and Joy. And a few more CDs. Yes, Diane has several. Feed the White Dog is the title on one. I love it. And there's another one that says, Homegrown. And you look great. You look like you are into <laughs> country. Well, let's hear an excerpt from the other song, right. which you wrote, I understand, after 9-11. I did. About thoughts on 9-11 and yeah. the title of it. Bring them home. I saw the images on TV of people looking for their loved you. ones. All right, let's play an excerpt from "Bring Him, Bring Them Home." Where is my sister, my brother, my friend, my mother, my father? Will I see you again? Please help me to find them. safely to me How can this be we are fighting again When will we learn to begin To put down our swords and lay them to rest and live from the peace deep within Where is my sister Help me to find them wherever they be. Oh, I love it. The harmony is gorgeous. Everybody has to know about your CDs. And I see another one I'm holding in my lap. It's called The Green Garland, a Christmas yeah. Collection. How perfect is that? And you're with Diane Burns and Mo Robinson. Right. That's fantastic. We don't have time to hear the whole CD, but I know on your website, everybody has to go to your website in order to enjoy. And Dance Doyle, yeah. I want to thank you for coming on again. Thank you for asking me. And I, I mean, I, I wish I could visit you sometime when you're working on a tapestry. Anytime. Because it takes so much time and effort. Yeah, it does. And these gorgeous tapestries we have here in the studio. I, can, I did want to ask you, if you were to sell one of your tapestries, well, we'll talk later. Because Bye, everybody. Thank you for being here today scenery. and enjoying the show. The native Call me if you want to be on the show. Songs. Call the station. Wave Wait goodbye, everybody. Wait a minute. Wait. Something's wrong. <laughs> Mambo Italiano, hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano, go, 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 you mixed up Siciliano. Hold your Genovese to the Mambo like a crazy with a hey Mambo, don't want a tarantella, hey Mambo, no more a mozzarella, hey.